Hi everyone, my name is Samara. I'm a master's student at the University of Florida in the Fisheries and Aquatic Sciences program, and I work out of the Nature Coast Biological Station. Um, unfortunately, the station is closed right now, so all of us, us students and all the staff are working from home, as you can see, um, but we're still doing our research and doing a lot of fun stuff, so I just wanted to share that with you today. So if you come by the station and talk to me, I'm sure you know what I'm about to talk to you about, but if you're unfamiliar with these, these are otoliths. Um, otolith means ear stone, so you can think of these as a fish's ear bones. Um, this particular pair of otolith come from a spotted sea trout. Um, spotted sea trout aren't a trout at all, actually they're in the drum family. Um, and drums get their names because during spawning seasons, uh, males will form these big aggregations um, and they will make a drumming or a croaking sound to attract females um, and to sync up spawning events. And so um, hearing is really important for these species. And so drums have some of the largest otolith compared to their body size of um, some of the, of the bony fishes. But aside from hearing, helping them hear, um, otolith have actually really important uses for scientists as well. And so we use these structures to age uh, spotted sea trout and a lot of other bony fish. And so um, these are bony structures and so they grow with the fish. And fish grow much faster in the summer than they do in the winter. So in the winter they get these dense opaque rings that you can count, similar to tree rings. And so I'll show you that today. But in order to age them, you actually first have to section them um, and look at them under a microscope. So I'm going to go through that process right now. So we use a diamond saw to cut the otolith with four four inch blades. And right here I'm just lining up the center of the otolith, the core, to make sure we're getting the right sections we need. This usually takes a long time for the saw to cut completely through the otolith. So while it's cutting, I'm just prepping the microscope saw that it's going to be glued down to. And I keep checking to see when it cut all the way through the otolith. And when it did, I carefully removed the sections. Um, and then I will start to grind them down to make sure that they're smooth and as scratch free as possible. And once they're smooth, I will glue them onto the microscope slide with a mounting medium that clears up any scratches and makes it easy to read. Okay, so our finished sections will look like this on the microscope. We have three of them. Um, and then we can put them under the microscope to see um, how old they are. All right, so we're gonna age this otolith that we have. So my laptop is connected to my microscope. So we're gonna find the section that we can read. Um, here we go. All right, so when you see this V right here, um, this means we have a good strong core and that's the best place on an otolith to read uh, their annulus. So once again, we're looking for those dark opaque rings that they lay down in the winter time. And if you look right here, this dark line right here, that's its first ring that it laid when it was turning one. And here is the second dark ring. So this fish would have been two years old at the time that it was captured. Um, and there is this clear area in between these dark lines and that's its growth um, in the summer um, when it's eating a lot and has favorable conditions. These otoliths were collected as part of my master's research, which is funded by the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission. Um, they've been collected with the help of our local charter captains in Cedar Key, including Captains Jimbo, Jim, and Stephen Keith of Saltwater Assassins Charters, Captain Denny Voyles of Voyles Guide Service, and Captain Carl Robinson of Robinson Seafood. All right, so once we compile a lot of different ages for spotted sea trout in this case, we can actually get a good understanding of the overall health of a population. And that's really important for biologists to know, but also for management. If you're trying to manage a species that's heavily exploited or heavily fished for in a system, um, for example, um, older fish are typically better spawners than younger fish, so they put out more eggs um, significantly more eggs and those eggs are typically more viable and more likely to survive and so if you're losing a lot of your older fish in a population you could start to expect that you might see changes to um, 
the juveniles that you have coming into a system and could see a population decline. Um, also, when you start to see population structure through uh, age composition data, you can tell if a population is being overfished or not, again, which is really crucial for us to know for um, our exploited species. Um, in my study, we are using our age composition information to see where we might have had had strong pulses of juvenile spotted sea trout coming through um, the cedar key system. Um, so if you look at your proportions at age, if you have a higher than normal um, two-year-old, you have more two-year-olds, for example, than you would expect to see, then maybe two years ago we had a lot of prey resources or favorable water temperature conditions um, that could be pushing um, more juveniles to uh, survive and make it to uh, adult stages. So I hope this was informative. Um, please let me know in the comments if you have any questions that we can answer. Um, stay safe uh, and thanks.